Apple has been positioning the iPad as a laptop replacement for years now, but to date the biggest limitation to that becoming a reality has been the software. Traditionally, the iPad has run iOS, which simply lacks many of the features you would expect from a computing experience, especially when it comes to productivity and professional applications. Now, however, Apple is trying to set the iPad apart from other iOS devices, with the launch of the new iPad OS. But does iPad OS really mean that the iPad can replace your laptop? What are the biggest missing features? I've been using iPad OS for a few months now to find out just how capable it is, and whether or not it means that your iPad really can replace your laptop. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate the support. Perhaps the biggest changes to iPad OS come in the form of how the iPad handles multitasking. There are a ton of new features that should help make the iPad a whole lot more productive. For starters, you can now finally open two instances of an app in split view mode meaning you can have two windows of Safari side by side. That's good news for a writer like me who often writes in WordPress while researching in another window. It's easier to launch new windows too. Drag new content into an open space and a new window will automatically be open for it. Other multitasking features are better too. Notably, Slide Over now allows users to quickly and easily switch between multiple apps. With this change, Slide Over arguably feels a little like an iPhone window on the side of the iPad screen, and it makes it super easy to jump into things like chat apps without having to leave the window or windows that you are already using. You can switch between apps in Slide Over simply by using the bar at the bottom of the Slide Over window. I, for example, use this feature mostly for chat apps, like Slack and iMessage. Next up is App Expose, which allows you to quickly and easily see what windows of an app you have open at a time. This is handy considering the ability to now set up multiple windows of the same app, and essentially means that even if you have multiple windows open, you can cycle between them relatively easily. For those that do write a lot of emails, articles, or anything else, Apple has also given iPadOS a number of new gestures for things like undo, redo, copy, and paste. These gestures are a handy addition, but they can take some time to get used to. Notable changes to gestures in iPadOS include the new action to place a cursor while typing. The old method basically used the magnifying glass, which meant that you had to hold down for a bit and then wait until it appeared and drag it to where you want it. This new gesture, however, allows you to simply drag the blinking cursor to wherever you want it. Easy. In iPad OS, to copy text, you'll now three finger pinch, with a three finger spread to paste. It isn't the most intuitive way to do things, but you'll get the hang of it. Last but not least is the ability to quickly undo and redo with three finger gestures. Swipe three fingers to the left of the screen to undo, and three fingers to the right to redo. A major reason iPadOS is so much more productivity friendly is that Safari has some major improvements, which means the web apps and the overall web browsing experience is a whole lot better. Notably, the iPad now automatically requests a desktop website instead of a mobile one, marking a major difference between how you experience the web on an iPhone and on the iPad. This makes sense. The iPad has a much larger display than the iPhone, and should be treated as such. Now, the iPad basically tells websites that a user is using macOS instead of iOS, but inputs are optimized for touch, so you can use your finger just as easily as you would a mouse on your laptop. In real life, the iPadOS web experience is pretty darn good, but there are a few issues. WordPress, which is the backend used by millions of blog-style websites, is buggy enough on the desktop, and it's even worse on the iPad. There are ways to get around the bugs, but I'm hoping that over time issues like these get resolved. That's also not to say that the issues are Apple's fault. They could have more to do with WordPress than Safari. Apart from the general web experience, Safari on iPadOS now has a proper download manager, which is another nice touch. In iPadOS, the iPad Pro's USB-C port is even more handy. I, as you can tell, don't have an iPad Pro, so I wasn't really able to test out these features, but the idea is that iPadOS brings native USB support to the iPad. That means that you can easily transfer files from devices like a hard drive or camera, which is very helpful. Another major change to the iPad is mouse support, but it's not exactly what you might expect. The feature has actually been added as an accessibility feature, and as such it's more aimed at emulating touch rather than adding full mouse support to the iPad. The cursor isn't really a pointer, it's a large circle that emulates a finger. That said, it is usable, and means that if you want to use a mouse in iPadOS, you can. Generally speaking, the features here are just the tip of the iceberg to what the iPad could eventually become. 
It seems as though Apple is finally figuring out that if it wants the iPad to be a laptop replacement, it's going to have to differentiate the iPad from the iPhone in some major ways. I expect that to continue over the next few years. But the question remains, can the iPad truly replace your laptop? Well, for some, it can. If you mainly use your laptop for social media, basic productivity and watching Netflix, then the iPad is an excellent option. Then again, for those things, the iPad was already a great option. Given the new features in iPadOS, anyone except gamers, serious video editors, audio producers, and other high performance users could probably get by with an iPad, but you might not want to just yet. If you don't have an incompatible app that's holding you back or need something high performance, then an iPad will work just fine, but others will likely want to wait and see how iPadOS evolves over the next few years. Thanks so much for watching this video, and again, please subscribe if you enjoyed it. My name is Christian, and we'll see you next time. See ya.